So we're back today to talk some Houston Texans and preview what the Chiefs can do to beat them, both on offense and defense. And I picked two plays to go over this week, uh, one over the Texans defense and the Buffalo Bills offense, and one over the Texans offense and the Buffalo Bills defense, both from the game from last Saturday. And one of the plays is pretty infamous from that game, and that would be the Josh Allen lateral pass in the final minutes. And the other one is the game-winning pass from Watson after seemingly uh, miraculously escaping a hit. And you would think both those plays went the Texans' way. How could they possibly show us anything that the Chiefs could take advantage of? Well, both those plays had a little bit of luck in them that went the Texans' way. Otherwise, I would have considered the play a loss for them. So let's go ahead and dive right on into it, starting with that Josh Allen lateral. And we'll watch the play first in its entirety and kind of let you guys get a sense of what's going on. So again, there's about a minute 16 left. And Allen has an empty backfield against the Texans. The Texans, if... You're a Chiefs fan. You probably know Romeo Cornell does not like to disguise his coverages so much. And there would be the lateral that was likely to be batted out by the tight end. So let's take a look at that play. We'll go in slow motion again here. And in that play, we see Josh Allen communicating with his offensive line about protection and X, Y, and Z and those sort of things. And we'll pause it right before the ball snaps. Now, the Texans here are in a pretty simple cover to man. This cover to man is also known as cover to man under or cover five. In this, you have five linebackers and DBs covering the wide receivers up front. So you have a wide receiver. Each one will be following them along the field in man coverage. Again, slot wide receiver on the outside. Um, slot cornerback here, a slot, a linebacker, excuse me, on a the inside slot wide receiver, who is also the tight end. The running back has been moved out of the backfield and is now a slot wide receiver as well. This running back will be covered by the linebacker on the adjacent side here. And then again, your coverage on the back here. Now, not everyone's playing man in this coverage. In cover two under or cover five, you also have the two safeties back here. The safeties will be play, playing the back zone in the back and will be drifting back there, covering anyone that runs too far past. So now these are the routes that the Buffalo Bills are using to beat the cover two under. First of all, you have that running back that's now out as a slot wide receiver, actually going to chip as this outside linebacker here comes in. The running back will, will kind of get in his way and, and help block before moving out of the backfield here to be kind of a safety valve for Josh Allen. We've got a wide receiver down here that's kind of running a, a route where he'll go down the field and cut up towards the sideline, hoping for completion there. Again, all these can be completed and, and opened up, but there's really one player that it's going to. Again, two wide receivers down here. Both are going to be taking a jab step to the outside and making it seem like they're cutting out before cutting back in and, and moving down the field. Now, the wide, or the wide receiver technically lined up as a wide receiver here, that this play is designed to get to is the tight end right there. And we'll go over the route that he's running as well. That route is actually going to start by chipping J.J. Watt, slowing him down a little bit, getting in his way, and then cutting down the field just about three yards down and hoping to be open right there. And it's easier to see once we put the routes on top of the coverage on why this is a problem. Okay, so we'll pause it again here. Again, your two safeties are going to be back here in the zone, basically preventing these deep routes. Also, two safeties, three wide receivers running deep. So technically, that's another way to beat this. Again, following, 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 and then two in the back. But we haven't highlighted this linebacker. Again, I mentioned he's going to be on the tight end. So why is that such a problem for that linebacker? Well, it will be a technically a natural pick. You can see how much traffic that this linebacker has to work through to get to that tight end, especially with the delay coming up. Again, he's going to be chipping, which is only about half a second or so, even when we slow it down. But that's enough time to let these 
wide receivers are getting in the way. Now, this isn't a penalty because it's not on purpose. The wide receivers aren't directly trying to run straight into that linebacker and prevent him from following or anything like that. It's their natural routes just causing a lot of congestion. Some of that is actually with the DBs in the back as well. They're supposed to be covering their wide receivers. However, they're going to be getting in his way as well. And we'll kind of watch that unfold a little bit here. So Allen hikes the ball. You see the tight end block and extend. And we'll kind of pause it right here. All right. So first, this linebacker that's drifted back a little bit has to get around. So instead of just heading straight down, he can't because, again, there's a wide receiver and a cornerback right here. So he's going to have to go around them. Well, he's also cutting inside as well. So now looking at it here, one, Josh Allen actually has a wide receiver that's opening up that beat his man. Same down here. Uh, both these wide receivers have beaten their man, men. However, it takes a while to get the ball down there, so he's probably not too open with the safety over the top. There's a limited window right here. But again, your main option is, is wide open. He's going to have to work around again. He can't cut down. That'll allow that tight end to move down and across the field. So he's going to have to work his way around. Again, this is a natural route, so it's not a pick. Right there, pausing it. Josh Allen has the opportunity to throw it and allow him to get up the field, probably for 8 to 10 yards, so a first down. Pretty good play. It's a win for the Buffalo Bills. But Allen doesn't throw the ball here, which I think is personally a mistake. That actually benefits him. So we're going to pause right here. He still has that tight end open, although he won't get as much now. He's got another wide receiver again open down there. This wide receiver is cutting in, so technically you could throw it across body. Not a good idea here. You have your two safeties covering back, so he's probably not a great idea to toss to as well. But again, open player coming across the field here. Easy completion for 10 plus yards. Easy completion down here for probably now about five yards or so. Maybe a little bit more if he can break a tackle. Allen, on the other hand, elects to run down the field, which isn't a bad option either. It's probably not the best, but... So what he does is actually a smart thing here. He pump fakes to his tight end. Because at this point, if he just keeps running, this linebacker is now going to cheat in, and he's going to be able to kind of merge with the defensive lineman here and stop him early. Instead, he pump fakes, freezes him in place, and then cuts up field for the run. He gets about that 10 yards, so about a wash from his mistake earlier on not completing the pass. He uses his natural athleticism, which he he's done time and time again this season to just kind of use his legs and outrush the coverage. But he's got a, a horde of defensive players coming after him. Now he hits, actually causes both players to miss, leaving a DB to, to hit him there. Now I'm freezing right here because I want to look and show you. I don't think Josh Allen's idea to pitch it here was a terrible idea. I think when he pitched it was the problem. You look down here, if he completes this pitch, and, and you can go at home, you can take a... Uh, a trash can or whatever it is and just wad up a paper ball and just toss it underhanded with your right hand into the trash can from that distance, less than three yards or so, you're probably going to make it in. That's a pretty easy shot. So if he does that now, I know he's about to take that hit, but if he does that now, look at all the space that this tight end has to run down the field. Now there's two defensive backs, the two safeties here coming back down as well but you also have a wide receiver there that can block. And all that takes is one broken tackle, and it's a touchdown and probably a playoff win for the Buffalo Bills. So a pitch here might actually be a pretty good idea. The problem, however, is that he doesn't pitch it then. Instead, he takes the hit and decides to pitch it from that position. And again, at home, if you want to try it out with the waistband, even closer, you can move in a yard or two away and try to underhand toss backwards that that paper ball into the wastebasket. It's going to sail high. 
that's kind of how the, those types of throws work. And that's what happens to Josh Allen and why that this play is such, such a failure on it. He still got the yards, got the first down, but it was risky. It was a turnover would end the game right then and there. Just a bad idea. Again, that idea is bad, not because of the pitch, but the timing and the position that he he pitched the ball from. Few quarterbacks, few people will accurately make that pitch, and the tight end definitely wasn't expecting it. Now, the reason I highlighted this play was because the Chiefs actually run a similar type of route combination to open up wide receivers, mostly tight ends with Kelsey as well. So we seen that, saw that against the Raiders, they did it. They did it against the Bears, and I was going to put a clip in there as well. However, the Bears all 22 is just horrendous, and I'm not going to put you through that because you can't see anything developing. But basically, they'll have all their wide receivers run to the left side of the field and have their tight end or a different wide receiver run to the right side of the field. And it creates those natural picks, that natural traffic, because again, the wide receivers know where they're going. The DBs don't ahead of the play. It's also allowed Mahomes to run in for several touchdowns this year. That same similar style of play. And it's something that they can take advantage of with the the Houston Texans because they like to play this coverage a lot. And they don't disguise their coverages, so you won't be too worried about um, that as well. Now, the next play that we're going to play here is going to be the Houston Texans offense and Deshaun Watson making a play. Again, this is the play that everyone remember is going to remember from this game, and it's when he escaped the blitz and found an open wide receiver to basically win the game. And we can watch him dance around, complete the pass, and have his wide receiver take the ball all the way down to the 10-yard line. But what happened? What went wrong for the Bills? Well, first, it's what coverage are they in? And you see what Watson sees basically right before, right after he makes his adjustment. And it looks like They're in a single high safety look with man underneath. So similar to the two high safety, except this time you just have one safety in the back. His job is to basically cover the back end, make sure there's not a big play. It's a cover one. You have your linebacker here basically playing a robber position, if you want to call it that, where he's basically going to be just jamming anyone that comes across the field here. Everyone else is in man. So again, they'll be following their men down the field. You've got your linebacker here whose job is to cover the tight end if he runs out for a route. If he doesn't, then he's allowed to blitz. Pretty simple concept. It's a very risky one, but at this stage in the game, it's the proper call. And the reason for that is because you don't have that safety valve in the back with the safety. You just have the one. So there's very a lot of different things you can do to, to beat that. And it allows for those big plays. The reason why it's a good idea here is because at this stage in the game, a field goal will win the game. So all you really have to do is get down to the 30. So allowing a 10-yard, 15-yard completion versus a 30-yard completion at this stage isn't that big of a difference. So it's a smart play to go through. So now Watson's already made his adjustments as well. But here's the routes that they're using to beat this. I mentioned there's several different ways. One, your cornerbacks here are playing pretty far off, so Watson has a comeback route on both sides of the field, basically allowing them to fall, fake like they're they're running down the field and then coming back towards the quarterback for hopefully an easy completion. That'll get them that first down marker down here. You can kind of see a little bit short over here, but you can get the gist. The other idea is to have both their wide receivers getting down the field. You have one that's just running, going to be running straight, and one that's going to be kind of hooking and curling back up. Watson's really going to only look to this side of the field on this play to start, and the reason for that is is basically twofold. One, he trusts Hopkins, and that's one of their biggest concerns. And why I think Fuller is actually um, so beneficial to them is then he has two wide receivers he trusts. But the other reason is because he is more likely to be open than this wide receiver over here because again this safety is closer and he's going to have to pick between the two to follow and it gives you a one-on-one matchup we'll kind of overlay that coverage back together here so you can kind of see so no one's going to be coming across the middle 
So you don't have to worry about this linebacker basically takes him out of the play. But as this safety drifts back, he's going to have to choose which wide receiver to cover is more likely coverage is going to be the one that's closer and crosses him first. And that's why giving him more time to cut down and across is more beneficial to opening up his route. Now he could go the opposite way, but again, you have a one-on-one -on -one over here. So Watson's most likely progression is going to be one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, depending on how it goes. So his first look is going to be over this way. But the problem is, is that the Buffalo Bills disguise their coverage, unlike the Houston Texans. So this is what happens. And we'll kind of we'll overlay both here for you as well. So this linebacker that was in that kind of robber route to prevent anything from crossing has now moved up into a blitzing position. But that's not a big deal for Watson. It would be great for them to take advantage of this open field here. However, there's not enough time on the play clock left, and they kind of have to go at this point. However, that doesn't interfere with anything else going on. Basically, they just have one extra blitzer to pick up at this time. Not a big deal for Houston. But as I mentioned, Buffalo likes to disguise their coverages. And they're not in that cover one. Instead, they're in a strictly man concept, which means that there is no over-the-top help at all. There is no safety help. Again, huge, huge, huge gamble. Does not pay off for them in the long run, but I think it's the proper call at this point. So you have one, 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 and then, again, if he runs out, one there. The problem is Watson doesn't know that this is strictly man. He's expecting this cornerback to drop back. And he's looking straight at Hopkins because he believes he's going to be the one that's going to be open. The problem is that they're sending that cornerback on a blitz. So he's coming around the side. You've got a couple different stunts going on, which is a big problem with the Houston Texans offensive line. They struggle mightily to pick up any stunts or cornerback blitzes or anything like that. Their communication is very poor, and it's honestly their biggest weakness on offense that offensive line communication for stunts. If you're running straight at them, they can hold their own all right, but it's those stunts that really mess with them. So he's going to be attacking down, down, straight. Your outside linebacker is going to be hooking down and around on the stunts. Once he recognizes that the tight end is not in coverage, he's going to be stunting around the outside as well. The problem is, for the Buffalo Bills, and I'm sorry, Bills fans, but the problem was that this blitz was too effective. And what I mean by that, and we'll kind of go over it as well here. So we'll watch it in slow motion. So Watson gets the ball, and here's your blitz coming. So again, you have cornerback coming untouched that way. Your tackle, he has, he has a defensive lineman and a linebacker now going after him. However, that defensive lineman is going to stunt, but he's forced to pick. He picks the inside one, which is what I believe you're taught to do because it takes the outside one longer to get to the quarterback. Watson's focus is all over here. So watching it again, the right tackle guesses improperly, and now that pocket is collapsing from the edges. You actually have an open wide receiver to the left over here, but expecting both these players to be open. Now, there's two things that went wrong for the Buffalo Bills, and they both start to occur right now. You've got two rushers coming at Deshaun Watson at the same time from the same angle. And if you ever hold something up together with two hands, it stays up. The other problem is I don't know what was going on with cornerback number 23 here. Because if you watch, and we'll slow it down again, and I think that there was some miscommunication because this wide receiver actually stumbles off of his cut. Cornerback sees that Watson's going to take a hit and elects to go and follow Hopkins instead. So following the play, 
Watson get, gets hit by both sides, and because he takes two different hits, stays on his feet. Also because he was about to get hit by two, and because this wide receiver stumbled, number 23 elected to double-team um, Hopkins here. I'm still not sure if that was just a communication breakdown or freelancing a little bit because of the scenario, but both those combinations proved to be the downfall of the Buffalo Bills as Watkins now sees he's got a wide open wide receiver right here at the sticks. And then who catches it? And we can see him again, 23, make a terrible, terrible angle, which basically takes it from a very long field goal to a very, very short one as they, he runs down the field. Why I bring this up for the Chiefs is because it really shows how you can disguise your coverages on Watson. He was a lot smarter in this to pick out a lot of different ones. Earlier on, when Buffalo decided to disguise their team and disguise their coverages, it caused problems for Watson. The other thing are stunts. The offensive line struggles with stunts. So that's how you slow down this Houston Texans offense. And that basically takes it to the video. Hopefully we'll see both of those from the Chiefs this coming Sunday, and we'll see you next time.